It was just another day. When I woke up, I rolled out of bed and started up the five steps of stairs to the main floor of my parents' house, then the seven after that to the bathroom on the second floor. My body knew these steps already and didn't require my mind to tell them when they started and ended. The house I grew up in Calgary saw some changes throughout the 19 years with renovations and whatnot, but in essence it was the same. It was where my sisters and I built snow forts in the winter, planted carrots in the garden in the spring, played street ball in our back alley late into a summer night, and collected ladybugs by the wilting flowers in the fall. It was here that I stepped out of home that morning, not quite comprehending what it meant to be leaving home. It all felt so normal. Just another day, listening to my younger sister Toki's laugh as we made stupid jokes out of little nothings, my mom's forming presents, and my dad who never fails to express how proud he is of me. All these things were normal, and perhaps taken for granted. I stayed in the normal as long as I could that morning. I think we all did. Acting casual as though I would be away only for a little while, and surely by evening we would be around the dinner table again, with everyone fighting over who got to pack mum's dinner for lunch. Yet, when it came to it, it was unmistakable. Something was going to happen. Are we breaking up? <laughs> Change is a time, a state of being, a constant in the unconstant, often accompanied with uncertainty, anticipation, and perhaps some nervousness. It's hard to comprehend all of this when your entire life is revolved around the same four-story house with five bedrooms, three sisters, and a loving mother and father. Yet there I was, now 35,000 feet in the air, going to a place far, far away from home. I watched the map on the little TV screen in front of me as we flew over the Canadian Rockies. Looking out the window, I smiled at the memories dotted throughout the landscape below. This is also home, I thought. I am bound to these places through the experiences and memories I've had. From the rolling foothills in Alberta, to the receding glaciers nestled on top of the high mountain peaks along the Great Divide, where rivers are born, flowing into lakes of the Okanagan Valley, sustaining acres upon acres of orchards until completing their journey into the North Pacific Ocean. The names of these places caused me to raise my head and invoke thoughts, perceptions, and opinions, giving ground to the I Remember winds. To some, these places are mere words, but to me, they are preconceived ideas holding some kind of meaning. I hadn't realized that this is what it meant to be familiar. quick debrief of the flight plan that we have. So we have one hour here in Vancouver. I'm in Vancouver right now and then headed to Tokyo, Narita. Um, two hour layover there, well two hours and 40 minutes and then we are headed to um, over to Bangkok after that. So pretty direct flight which I'm pretty happy about. Um, yeah, lots of flying time. It's like a solid 10 hour flight to Japan and then a seven and a half after that. So see how it goes. 
We flew over broken parts of Alaska, small islands I didn't even know existed. Then into Tokyo, and over Shanghai, Taipei, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Laos. A distinct thought occurred to me. There are people living down there. It was a strange thought, a whole world beyond that which I knew. I didn't know what to make of these places. There was nowhere to place my thoughts, no ground to which the mind could root its opinions. These places were mere words, void of any substantial meaning. Alright, we're boarding on the plane number three today. I'm running on like two brain cells right now. I'm freaking exhausted. Uh, last look of the trip to Bangkok and then we're good to go from there. PCR test. Perfect. Thank you so much. We are in. Uh, I'm Tomo. 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 Tatsuzuki. Tatsuzuki. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Oh boy, it's hot here. Right here. Thank you. Tomo. <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? Yeah, that's it. Tomo. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. You too. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. I am going to. Get high out, high out, still look power, look baby, fit pink, jumping, look fit farm. After that, the boat take you rock top, honey. Yeah, look, 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 one hour come back, split one pallet. Okay. Backpacking wasn't what I had expected it to be. Coming from car life, I wasn't used to having to find a place to sleep every night and transport to get around to see what it is I wanted to see. I remember struggling to adjust to travel in the first days in Bangkok. The jet lag hit me hard, and I walked around the city like a zombie, hardly taking in my surroundings. I was quickly overwhelmed by the persistent tuk-tuk drivers offering me tours, the street food stands around every corner, the loud bars, the bright lights, and the towering buildings. Without any plans or a sense of direction, all the must-sees and do's of the city left me slipping into doubtful thoughts. My romanticized vision of travel was quickly slipping out of my control. I'm gonna get a phone plan there, a SIM card, and yeah, go from there. Instinct told me there was something beyond the concrete walls, so I quickly gathered my belongings into my big blue bag and jumped on a train headed to the old capital of Ayutthaya. I washed out the window as the urban city slowly started to melt into the vast countryside. I took a forceful breath and whispered to myself for the first time, I am here in Thailand. I wasn't convinced, yet at that given moment I had taken action and that was enough. Station. We are headed to the hostel first. I'm gonna drop off my big blue bag and then explore the area. Okay, this is Five. Perfect. Cup and cup. Cup and cup. Hello. 
little friend. <laughs> oh, you're a cuddly one, aren't you? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. You're purring. <laughs> I forgot that this road is on the left. I think we often carry certain expectations on how things ought to be. Sometimes these expectations are quite subtle and hard to recognize. For example, being at home, I could reliably expect food in the fridge, a warm shower, and a bed to sleep in at night. I didn't think much of this back home because it was predictable. Expectations and predictable outcomes gave me a sense of security and control, and that was very comforting. Now, that isn't to say that there is anything wrong with being comfortable. I truly believe that being comfortable should always be our priority, as it provides favorable conditions for a peaceful mind, which is a sure way to improve our well-being. Yet, I also believe that there are many ways in which we can find comfort. Some are sustainable and quite healthy, while others perhaps a little less. If we take a closer look and investigate the true nature of the world, it's easy to see that nothing is truly for certain. In our world, our state of security is always in question, with wars, political upheaval, climate change, and so on. There is no doubt that at times life can feel overwhelming. Challenging periods in our lives, like times of change, big or small, can leave us feeling uncertain, stripping away our sense of security and control. In one sense, we can direct our attention on the things we cannot control. If this is how we view our world, sooner or later we are bound to feel doubtful, and we will quickly find ourselves feeling helpless over the ever-changing nature of the world. The world is a myriad of doors awaiting our hopeful encounter, yet we become too afraid to walk through any of them, unbeknownst of what lies on the other side. Fear cripples our ability to take action, leaving us unwilling to experience anything at all. I have found this approach to be fruitless and unskillful. Yeah, very neat. This way of thinking might be more habitual to us than we may presume. In a stable environment, it can feel like our lives are under control. We may have a place to sleep at night, loved ones to come home to, and food readily available to nourish our hunger. Control imbues comfort and security, and our minds become very attached to this subtle sense of stability. It becomes difficult to see things we take for granted when they are seemingly stable, perhaps even certain. But this is a false perception, and it is not a healthy state of mind. Predictability is not a measure of certainty. This fact became very apparent to me when I was removed from my predictable comforts. It's true that we have to come to accept that there are things which we cannot control, because that is the nature of our world. Yet, I think we are often given a long list of uncontrollables which we are expected to willfully let go of, but I'm not so sure that this is how it works. I believe the real work comes in recognizing what we cannot control, and cultivating a gentle awareness that penetrates something deep within. If we are truly aware that something is not in our control, it will cause a subtle shift in our perspective, and we will find no more reason to try and control it. I believe that acceptance is simply the byproduct of seeing things for how they are. Now this doesn't mean we should simply sit there and let the world walk all over us, claiming somewhat existentially that nothing is in our control. I have been there, and as far as I have seen, plain indifference does not accomplish anything. Cultivating awareness takes effort. Hours of introspection and meditation is by no means the easy way out. Yet, when we have scrubbed our minds clean, the residue of whatever is left will be the things that we can control. Now this will be different from moment to moment, but the rest will feel intuitive. It all happens in an instant. The epiphany strikes us that the only thing that is for certain is the present moment. We become uninterested in the meaningless what-ifs that we have wasted our time and energy on, and instead, we direct our resources into taking action. Actions are what bring us back to the present moment, and the present moment is for certain. 
It is a secure refuge because it is real. Seeing things in this way doesn't remove the uncertainty from our lives, but it can change the narrative we tell ourselves. Uncertainties, when narrated in the present tense, become opportunities. Family dinners at this hostel. So good. So it's currently 5.53. Me and the two other boys from the dorm or the hostel woke up. We're gonna try to catch a sunrise, so. It's still pretty dark out there. When I am faced with a trialing period in my life, I have found it a useful exercise to meditate upon what is troubling me. I'll sit and focus on my breath until the mind is very calm. And from here, I am able to approach its entanglements and discern whether or not they are within my control. If I find that my concerns are beyond my control, I try not to spend much more time dwelling upon it, and instead I try to direct my attention on the things that I can control. When life is stable, I will practice a healthy dose of gratitude for the blessings and kindred spirits that are in my life. It serves as a reminder that these things are not for certain, therefore they are that much more important to cherish in the present. Whew. Yeah, look at that. So we found this set of ladders up there. The sun's coming out, so we gotta hurry. Mom is not gonna like this. Wow. How you feeling, man? <laughs> feeling alive? It can be difficult to see things in this way, especially when we are so absorbed in it. I still struggle with this today, but I can confidently say that with time and practice, it has been overall much improved. That's not going in the blog. <laughs> you cannot get in there. I can, like, I would do it, but it's oh, really? pretty hard here. Ah, no, no, no. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it moved like on me. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hope to see you soon. Yeah. yeah. If we're coming, if we're back in Ayutthaya, we're we're coming right back. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Kap <laughs> kumakam. That's so friendly. They're so awesome. Okay, 7-11. 7-11? Seven, 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 yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. We, we take third class. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> How many classes? Three. I met two Germans, Finn and Arif, at the hostel I was staying at in Ayutthaya. Being the same age, we quickly bonded. That night, the three of us snickered to the roaring snore of the fourth in our dorm before finally falling asleep. By morning, we had agreed to accompany one another to the north, and by evening, we found ourselves in a third-class cabin of an overnight train, trying to get comfortable in the hard wooden seats. The cabin was noisy from the creaks and grinding sounds of the dingy old rail car. An open window didn't help the noise, but it was more bearable than the heat and humidity that made our skin stick to the grimy old leather seats. Adiv! <laughs> Headed to Lampang. Uh, yeah, I'm taking the overnight train. This is a solid nine and a half hour ride. Uh, so it's gonna be a long night. Uh, this is what we're sleeping on tonight. <laughs> it's not the most comfortable, but it's got a beautiful moon. There's a full moon right there. You can't really see it, but that's a full moon. And good company. This is our reef, and that is Finn. Passengers of all sorts, farmers, merchants, monks, elderly and young, came as they went, carrying stories of a lifetime that had somehow brought them to cross paths with us on this carriage, even if only for a brief moment. 
We drifted in and out of consciousness as the train steadily made its way to a destination still unknown. Late into the night, the two Germans appeared to have managed momentary rest. I had not. I gazed out into the darkness as my body bumped and swayed to the rhythm of the rail. What was out there? I couldn't know, so I whispered a reflection. May I find acceptance in the things I cannot control, courage for the things that I can, and wisdom to know the difference. I could feel these words, and with it a sense of adventure blooming within, an excitement to wake up every day like it was the last, to live it all because there is nothing to lose. The start of a new adventure had begun. Thank you all for your continued love and support through the highs and the lows. These stories will continue to come out in this slow manner as I take my time to reflect. But as a dear friend told me, I hope that like aged wine, it will be all the while worth the wait. I am grateful for you all, and am wishing you well. Tomo.